there's the possibility that a star will explode near us in the next couple of billion years. But over the course of the history of life on Earth, the estimates are that maybe only one of the mass extinctions you know, was caused by a star blowing up, in particular, a special kind called a gamma ray burst. And the I think it's the Ordovician Solarian uh, Silurian, Ordovician Silurian extinction 420 or so, 440 million years ago, that is speculated to have come from one of these particular types of exploding stars called gamma ray bursts. But even there, the, the evidence is circumstantial. So those kinds of existential threats are, are reasonably rare. The greater danger, I think, is civilization changing events where it's a much smaller asteroid. Uh, which those are hard to, harder to detect, or or a giant solar flare that shorts out the grid in all of North America. Let's yeah. say now, you know, astronomers are monitoring the sun twenty four seven with various satellites, and we can tell when there's a a flare or a coronal mass ejection, and we can tell that in a day or two, a giant bundle of ele- energetic particles will arrive and twang the magnetic field of Earth and send all kinds of currents through long-distance power lines. And that's what shorts out the transformers. And transformers are you know, expensive and, and hard to replace and hard to transport and all that kind of stuff. So if we can warn the power companies and they can shut down the grid before the big mm-hmm. bundle of particle hits, then we will have mitigated much of this. Now, for a big enough bundle of particles, you can get short circuits even over small distance scales. So not everything will be saved, but at least the whole grid might not go out. So again, you know, astronomers, I like to say, support your local astronomer. <laughs> they may help someday save humanity by telling the power companies to shut down the grid, finding the asteroid 50 or 100 years before it hits, then having clever physicists and engineers deflect it. So many of these cosmic threats, cosmic existential threats, we can actually predict and do something about or observe before they hit and do something about. So it's it's you know. uh, terrifying to think <laughs> that people would listen to this conversation. It's like when you listen to Bill Gates talk about pandemics in his TED talk a few years ago. Yeah. And realizing we should have supported our local astronomer more. <laughs> well, I don't know whether it's more because, as I said, I actually think uh, human-induced threats or things that right. occur naturally on Earth, either a natural pandemic or perhaps you know a bioengineering type pandemic, mm-hmm. or you know something like a super volcano. Right? Yeah. Um, there was one event, Toba, I think it was seventy plus thousand years ago, that that caused a, a gigantic decrease in temperatures on Earth because it sends up it sent up so much soot that it Mm -hmm. blocked the sun, right? It's the nuclear winter type disaster scenario that some people, including Carl Sagan, talked about decades ago. But we can see in the history of volcanic eruptions, even more recently in the 19th century, Tambora and other ones, you look at the record and you see rather large dips in temperature associated with massive volcanic eruptions. Well, these super volcanoes, one of which, by the way, exists under Yellowstone, you know, in the central... U.S. I mean, it's not just it's not just one or two states. It's a it's a gigantic region, uh, and there's controversy as to whether it's likely to blow any time in the next hundred thousand years or so. But that would be perhaps not a mass extinction because you really need to, or, or perhaps not a complete existential threat because you have to get rid of sort of the very last humans for that. But but at least getting rid of um, you know killing off so many humans, truly billions and billions of humans. The one that there have been ones tens of thousands of years ago, including this one, um, Toba, I think it's called, where it's estimated that the human population was down to 10,000 or 5,000 individuals, something like that, right? If you have a 15 degree drop in temperature over quite a short time, it's not clear that even with today's advanced technology, we would be able to adequately respond, at least for the vast majority of people. Maybe some would be in these underground caves where you'd keep the president and a bunch of other important people, you know, 
but the, the typical person is not going to be protect, protected could when, be, when all of agriculture is is cut off, right? And it, when it could be hundreds of millions or billions of people, yeah, starving to death. Exactly, that's right. They don't all die immediately, but they use up their supplies. Uh, or again, this electrical first grid. of toilet paper. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Dash that toilet paper, you know. Um, or the electrical grid. I mean, imagine North America without power for a year, right? I mean, we've become so dependent. We're no longer the cave people. Yeah. They they would do just fine, right? Yeah. What do they care about the electrical grid, right? What do they care about agriculture? They're hunters and gatherers. But we now have become so used to our way of life that the only real survivors would be those rugged individualists who live somewhere out in the forest or in a cave somewhere, yeah. completely independent of anyone else. Yeah, I've, I've recently, I recommend it. It's totally new to me, this kind of survivalist uh, folks, but there's a, a few show, there's a lot of shows of those, but I saw yeah. one on Netflix and I started watching them and there's a, they make a lot of sense they they reveal to you how dependent we are on all aspects of this beautiful systems we human have built. Right. And how fragile they are. Incredibly fragile. And yeah. This <laughs> this whole conversation is making me realize how lucky we are. Oh, we're we're incredibly lucky, but we've set ourselves up to be very, very fragile. And we are intrinsically complex biological creatures that except for the fact that we have brains and minds with which we can, you know, try to prevent some of these things or respond to them, we as a living organism require quite a narrow set of conditions in order to survive. You know, we're not cockroaches. We're not going to survive a nuclear war. 